Okay, we are wall to wall on this right now with all that's happening at the Supreme Court. Man, this is, a, this is a busy, busy day. The Daily Signal, our news outlet, they're at the Supreme Court covering it. Our heritage experts are, are just arms deep, elbows deep in case law right now, uh, researching, preparing all of the stuff that we need to know to prepare for this, this, uh, this episode. And of course, Heritage Explains, mm -hmm. we are live taking your questions. We are the place, as we like to say here, to cut through the noise of the news hype and get straight to the heart of the matter. If you've got questions, go ahead, type them into the comment section. Do it now. Whatever's been on your mind as you've been seeing this develop, you've been watching on TV, a lot of the hype that goes wall to wall, we're going to be the ones to help uh, cut through that noise and get you a good answer. Now, with the leak of you know the draft opinion, many are asking, is this the end of Roe v. Wade? So we're just loaded and ready for it. Where do things currently stand? And I'm happy to introduce you. And by the way, my name's Tim Desher. I host a podcast here called Heritage Explains. And we like to do this uh, on camera to answer your questions live. But Roger Severino, he's the Vice President of Domestic Studies here at the Heritage Foundation. And uh, he's the former director of the Office of Civil Rights and Health and Human Services under President Trump. He is poised to answer all of these questions I've also heard that uh, you're a heck of a dancer, which uh, I, I am excited to take yes. lessons from you one and, day. And uh, I was tempted to break out into dance yes. when I heard the news about the opinion. It's, well, we'll see. I mean, there is a lot to be answered here. Was that the opinion? What does it mean? What is the draft? So I'm going to kick us off with the first question I think that's on our, with, you know, with, with the leak, you know, and I wanted to start there. It's all over TV, the leak from the Supreme Court, the draft opinion. But there's a lot more at stake here than just the leak. Mm -hmm. But address the leak. What are we hearing? What do we know? And how do we proceed with that leak? This is new territory. Never in the history of the Supreme Court has a draft opinion been leaked to the press in the world. And this is a horrible precedent because the court is supposed to be immune from politics. The court is supposed to be there to interpret the law as written by the founders as the amendments were put into place uh, and legislators when they pass laws. They're not political actors, but the leak is designed to pressure them, to intimidate them, to try to te te uh, treat them like politicians. Hmm. That's not their role. That inverts the process. It's an attack on the system yeah. to be doing this. And the suspicion is it's from the left because they saw that finally Roe v. Wade was going to be put into the ash bin of history hmm. because it is terrible law. It is not based on the Constitution. It was liberal activists that were simply making stuff up, inventing a right out of thin air to kill an unborn human child. Hmm. And that was now it looks like it looks like yeah. finally the people will be able to pass laws to protect life through the representative. And the left has gone nuts. Yeah. And that explains why the leak happened in the way it did. It's shocking that it happened, but it, it gives we're at the precipice yeah. of finally, after 50 years of the pro-life movement and the conserv conservative legal movement, the efforts of Heritage Foundation mm. and others, to finally be able to say Roe is gone, mm. this abuse of the law is gone, and we will be able to protect innocent life in the womb. Uh, we are taking your questions live. There's a lot of them out there. We know we've been seeing it. We've been tracking them on social media. So please feel free to put them in. We will take them live. So if you type it in, chances are we'll read it. So I, I just want to say this. You mentioned that that traditionally with the Supreme Court and there is a lot of if, every time I run by the Supreme Court, there's a sense of like awe and, and wonder of, of just like what happens in there? Not many people go in there. Not many people get the chance to experience the Supreme Court, what happens there. So there's very limited knowledge. So here's here's my question for you with that in the tradition. And this is a first thing happening. Chief Justice Roberts has said that there's going to be an investigation. Mm -hmm. But what else should the Supreme Court do? Is there anything else that can be done at this point? They could issue the opinion as soon as humanly possible. Okay. Whoever leaked this was trying to pressure the justices to change their votes. That's the most likely explanation, which is an incredible abuse mm -hmm. of the trust of anybody who had a copy of that document. Very few people had it. Mm -hmm. So it's likely a, a clerk. So in response to this, Chief Justice Roberts, who really cares about the institutional reputation yeah. of the Supreme Court, that right. it should be above politics. Well, they should 
do do the right thing. A, it's a right decision on the merits. Roe has to go. They already had at least five votes saying that. Issue the opinion as fast as humanly possible now to deprive the people who leaked it, the folks on the left who want to gum up the works, deprive them of the ability to interfere with the process. So yeah. that's what the court should do. Put it out there in the next couple days. Hmm. Say this is now, we all know that the Supreme Court said this is actually a, 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 a verified draft opinion. Wow. It wasn't fake. Yeah. Um, go ahead and make it permanent. We all know what it's going to be. Take that final step. The, it will save more babies' lives. The sooner you do it, the I love. I love that. It, it, this is all about, this isn't about the leak. This is about life. This is about saving babies' lives. I wanted to just pivot it here. We've got questions already coming in. Uh, Tammy, thank you so much for watching on YouTube. Uh, she said, why couldn't this have been overturned years ago? Um, Michael says, do you believe that this will affect the elections in any way? Um, I, I'm just curious if, if you have anything on mm -hmm. that. I mean, I mean, I think Tammy's question really is um, something that goes to the heart of how bad Roe has been and how long right. it's been, 50 years. It, it was the abortion distortion. Everything wow. abortion touches, it corrupts. It corrupts our politics. It corrupts our laws. It corrupts our human relations. Because if you demean the human person mm -hmm. in the most vulnerable stage, it's going to have these horrible spillover effects. Yeah. It absolutely destroyed the legal process. It destroyed our confirmation processes. You saw the attacks on Justice Thomas, mm -hmm. the vilification of Justice Kavanaugh. This is the left trying to grasp onto power yeah. any way it can because they know they will lose at the ballot box. Mm -hmm. States already have pro-life laws in place that will be springing into life. And many other states will adopt laws to actually protect human life at its mm -hmm. earliest stages in the most vulnerable stage. 26 states petitioned the Supreme Court to undo Roe versus Wade so that the people could have a voice again. Wow. And not just the people in the states, but also the people at the federal level will now be able to actually finally say, this is what we stand for, but this is how we are gonna protect unborn human life. This is how we're gonna help mothers hmm. in crisis and difficult pregnancies. Yeah. It has to be both the humanity, the humanity of the child and compassion and support for the mother. And that's how we we pass these pro-life laws. Yeah, and, and to Michael's question about elections, you know, we, we don't, you know, dallying elections too much here. But I will say this. We know from polling that a you know large majority of Americans are not in favor of abortion anymore. That's right. The more that we see ultrasounds as the technology gets better, we're able to see that this is life, that this is actually life. And we don't have to debate too much because when you see That's when right. you see it, it really becomes apparent. And I'm not so sure that people are interested and in, um, in, in seeing Roe continue here in America. They're not. The, yeah. the American public is generally pro-life. Yeah. And rightly so. We, we root for the underdog. And there's, there's no more dangerous place to be for a vulnerable person than the womb today because of Roe versus Wade. Hmm. We're an outlier in the world. We're one of just a handful of countries where abor abortion on demand is available up until the mo moment of birth. That's up important. until the moment of yeah. birth. Yeah. You could get an abortion in this country. Wow. We're to the left of Europe uh, by a wide margin, and this is going to be a chance to scale it back. Now, the leak doesn't mean it's a done deal. It right. looks like it, okay. but they have to issue the opinion formally uh, and not bow down to the intimidation tactics. And once they issue that opinion formally, then you're going to see the, the pro-life sentiment in America actually finally come to life to protect our most vulnerable citizens. There has to be a response at the states. And at the federal level as well. This yeah. is an issue that uh, has been long overdue, mm. long overdue. Mm. Well, we've got so many people tuning in. We thank you so much. Karen, she's in Ohio, she's watching. Rose is in Indiana watching. We've got Nancy on Facebook, Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, great area of the country. I love that there. And um, I wanted to also get to Jerry on Facebook, has a great question here. And I think this goes, again, this really does go to understanding what is at stake here? And that is, how did Roe v. Wade make it to the Supreme Court in the first place? A little history It was there. a long struggle of the conservative legal movement. Yeah. You had groups like Federal Society, a lot of support from Heritage, uh, Beckett Fund, ADF. All these other groups were part of the conservative legal movement that didn't exist mm. during Roe v. Wade in 1973. The left dominated and they ran wild. Mm. And it slowly, we had, we got better at appointing good conservative constitutionalist judges who say we believe in the original uh, structure of the Constitution, yeah. what the founders wrote, 
is what is actually should be applied in law. You know, it's shocking that a lot of folks on the left reject that. They think that the Constitution needs updating. Well, if it needs updating, we should have a vote and update it. I think the Constitution is pretty good and the founders had a great message. Um, and it took decades mm. fighting to get Robert Bork after he was Borked, which President Biden had a huge influence in trying to attack Robert Bork, a, a, a great, decent jurist. And we were able to appoint constitutionalist originalist judges, yes. including President Trump, appointing three. Three. And that is the absolute decision maker. I think President Trump will go down as the most pro-life president in history, yeah. having made those appointments and members of the Senate standing firm and voting the right way to appoint constitutionalist judges who respect the law, because the law does not include an unfettered right to, a, to an abortion. And that's just a start, but that's the most egregious. You, you mentioned something important, and that has to do with, okay, you want to you do this? Let's, let's, have, let's have a vote here. And part of the draft opinion says, quote, our decision returns the issue of abortion to those legislative bodies, and it allows women on both sides of the abortion issue to seek to affect the legislative process by influencing public opinion, lobbying legislators, voting, and running for office. Women are not without electoral or political power. Seems like that's a pretty good, uh, it, it seems pretty reasonable given America. It, it is the proper way of understanding women's rights. If you deprive women of the right to vote on this issue, yeah. how is that furthering women's rights? And that's mm -hmm. what the Supreme Court did with Roe versus Wade. It said, you cannot vote on this issue. We're taking it away from the democratic process. And the Supreme Court even said, this is going to help bring us together as a country. Get over it. Listen to us and, and uh, come together. It didn't work. Hmm. When you take away people's voices like that, women's voices in particular, the, the actual statute at issue in this case came out of Mississippi, yeah. where 55% of the people voting were women wow. in the state. So how is it pro-woman to say, sorry, you're not going to get a voice on, on this issue? And men, too, would be deprived of, of a voice because there are fathers that are involved as well. Hmm. Um, and we have to support family formation to make sure that abortion becomes unthinkable so that the, the screeching folks on the left um, understand that we care about people from conception through death and everything in between. Yeah. People matter. Yeah. And, and this is going to help change the culture, hopefully in the right way, because we'll reestablish a true culture of life. People matter. That's why we're here right now. And we've got a, a worldwide audience watching right now. Uh, uh, Mathuis is watching in Bost Botswana. That's great. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Michael is in Philadelphia. They're kind of close. Um, we've got uh, Dimville Muhammad watching from Somaliland. Our friends from Somaliland are tuning in. Welcome. Rob's watching in Massachusetts. Wow. Thank you so much for being here, guys. If you, if you have questions, please let us know. Type them in the chat. We'll get to them live here. Uh, we have a, a, a good question, I think. Uh, from Ronald on Facebook. Is it true that the only thing that is going to happen is that Roe goes back to the states to decide? Legislatures. So Legislatures. states and federal. What the Supreme Court did was say, we're going to decide for the country once and for all. Okay. And even left-wing commentators at the, at the time said that was a gross abuse. Uh, and now some states who already have pro-life laws in effect, if this decision gets finalized, those pro-life laws will spring into life. Other states are considering pro-life legislation and Capitol Hill here in Washington, D.C. are considering as well. It's a both and. Um, the, the states generally have the, the first role in protecting the health and welfare of people in their states. That's yeah. to be expected. But there's also federal roles as well. Mm. Chemical abortion is going to be a huge issue. Wow. You're going to have pro-life states that are, are going to be protecting unborn life. And you have Forces are going to try to flood those states with what will be illegal drugs, uh, chemical abortions wow. that kill unborn life. Hmm. There's a federal role, role there because it's interstate commerce right. where the federal government could say, no, we're going to respect state pro-life laws. Um, and that's one one aspect that the, the federal government could take, as well as just protections of unborn life, you know, from heartbeat or better. Yeah. Right? They're right. Recognizing the humanity of the child that we know with ultrasound technology. We know so much about a child in the womb that could suck its thumb, could yeah. feel pain, has a, a same heart. You know, there's two hearts beating at once, uh, separate DNA. We know so much about biology that it is, it is undeniable. And, yeah. and legislators have a, a, a role to play in, in protecting unborn life. We have a question here. Uh, and, and again, I wanted to, I, I wanted, I wanted to, to cover the leak as well. This is a very important thing. 
Um, and and uh, Ethan on YouTube said the Supreme Court has never had a leak of this magnitude. What do you think are the long term ramifications of this? Ethan, <laughs> thank you for that question. Really appreciate it. I was amazed that Chief Justice Roberts issued a statement today confirming that the leak was true. Hmm. Right. They, they could have said, you know what, we don't comment on leaks, but confirmed it and said that this is a singular attack on the institution. But they're going to continue to do what they're going to do. And what they're supposed to do is ignore political voices. They're supposed to rule based on the law and the original public meaning of the Constitution. Right. There is no basis whatsoever for a right to abortion in the Constitution. This is what the draft opinion says. Yeah. They're going to be tightening up leaks in the future. The, the Chief Justice already said they're going to get the court marshals involved to do an investigation. Okay. I, I am hopeful that they find the person who did this yeah. because this, this is uh, trying to go around our constitutional balance, yeah. right? This is not an arena for politics. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Roe v. Wade distorted everything. So this yeah. is almost to be expected. There's every norm that, that abortion touched has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. This is further confirmation of that fact. The court needs to get out of the abortion business altogether uh, and, and restore some semblance of the rule of law. And that, that opinion yeah. is phenomenal. Everybody should read it. It's so well thought out. Justice Alito has a, a it tour really de force is. Yeah, it really in, is in saying this is the proper role of the courts. Yeah. They don't get involved in, in setting national abortion policy in this way. Yeah. Um, and this, the people will be empowered to protect unborn life. And the court said unborn life is worth protecting, right? Mm. The state has a legitimate mm. interest in protecting unborn life. And that is incredibly powerful as well. Yeah. Well, um, we have a, a great, great question that gets to the activism of this. You know, a lot of our viewers are conservatives that, that want to know what they can and what they should do. What is our response to this? Um, and the question says, it says pro-abortionists are saying they are ready to fight. What can we expect this fight from the left to look like? And how will conservatives counterpunch I didn't say counterpunch. I said counterpunch, but but it sounds cooler to counterpunch, and to continue to stand up for life in the unborn. Yeah. We've already heard first when Chuck Schumer said that the justices would quote reap the whirlwind if they go after Roe versus Wade. Yeah. Right. Th this is the whirlwind they're trying to cause. They cannot be allowed to to attack our system in this way through leaks and etc. There are left-wing members of, of on Congress who are going to try to codify Roe v. Wade to just take Roe v. Wade as horrible as it is and turn it into law, yep. which is as anti-life as it, as it comes. It's anti-science. You know, they try to be the claim the party of science mantle. It is <laughs> as anti-science as it's come to deny the humanity of human life from its earliest stages. We know that. Yep. So they're going to push on the hill bills attacking life, codifying Roe versus Wade, uh, making it as is trying to make it as easy to have an abortion pill sent to you as it is to take a vitamin. Jeez. These are dangerous abortion pills that will think about it strong enough to end unborn life in the womb when the human body is designed to be the safest place possible for huh. developing life. And these poisons that are, are given to women to kill the child uh, are, are barbaric and dangerous and Congress needs to put an end to it. Um, but you're going to have forces on the left or they're going to try to codify it. And they're trying to hand it out like like vitamins. And that's that's dangerous and, and reckless. Well, one of the things that you can also do, I just wanted to say, is you can keep going to heritage.org, logging on to read all the great research we're doing. Like I said, we have our experts that are doing the research, that are putting in the time to understand this opinion, to figure out the right ways to attack and to counterpunch. So please continue to stay tuned. Roger, we're going to continue to do this. This is not over. This is just this is beginning. beginning here. We wanted to we wanted to turn the camera on and go to you as we normally do. Uh, and Richard on Facebook says, will the court bring back prayer in the, in the, to the classroom next? I don't know if we're able to talk about that one, but we are praying for this. We need to pray. Absolutely, we do need to pray. This is a huge thing. So leave us with anything else before we head off here. If you have anything mm -hmm. else to add here, otherwise... Uh, we'll leave it to you all to keep commenting. If you do, we will answer your questions. If you do, even if we're not on camera. Excellent. The, if the leakers thought this was going to help their cause, it just blew up in their faces. Wow. This is this is a reason to be so hopeful that we're finally going to be able to defend innocent human life in the womb. And that is a cause for celebration. That's great. Roger, thank you so much for being here today. It's been great. And thank you for watching, contributing to this. All your questions, we, we really do appreciate it from all around the world. We will see you on the next episode of Heritage Explains Live.